of those people that reads junk mail. Why? Because there's something entertaining about them. From credit cards to political mailers to the local grocers offering you coupons. You know how some people can tell that it's going to rain because they can sense it in the weight of the air and how it feels and the smell of the landscape. I can detect the change of the season by the type of mail that comes into my mailbox. For example, once the political mailers come in, you know it's election season. And then you know it's time for spring cleaning once the furniture catalogs come in. This week, however, something very special came in the mail. Something that signifies the times are truly a changing. Today, I got a mailer advertising a Broadway show. Yes, that's right. Broadway is coming back to New York City and I have the harbinger to prove it. There are 41 Broadway theaters in New York City and as of filming, 36 of them are open and running. With so many options to choose from, where do you even begin in choosing a Broadway performance to watch? So in this video, we are going to talk about how to choose a Broadway show to watch because as they say, the hardest part of making a decision is making a decision. But before anything else, welcome. My name is Thea and you are watching Urban Caffeine where we talk about life and survival in New York City. Because as we know, life does not come with a standard issue manual, but certain chapters of it are available on YouTube. If this is the first video of mine that you are seeing, I invite you to check out my channel to see other videos of New York City. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Let's celebrate by hitting that like button. So let's talk Broadway. By definition, a Broadway theater is a theater that sits over 500 people and is located in the theater district except except for one theater that is located in the Lincoln Center. And Off-Broadway sits less than 500 people and doesn't necessarily have to be in the theater district. And an Off-Off-Broadway sits less than 100 people and is scattered all over New York City. Off-Off-Broadway is a fun experience themselves. There's something charming and intimate about going to a theater with only 30 other people. Whether it's Broadway, Off-Broadway, or Off-Off-Broadway, each of these theater sizes have their own appeal. But when it comes to Broadway, as mentioned earlier, 36 of the 41 Broadway theaters are running and have performances. So this means there are no shortage of options. So where do we even begin? Here are a couple considerations. There are performances on Broadway that have been around for ages. Think The Lion King, Wicked, Phantom of the Opera, etc. So here are my thoughts on these long-running productions. And by long-running, I mean something about two years or older. If you've never seen a live theater performance or you've just gotten into it but haven't really cultivated your own personal palette of preference when it comes to live theater, or live performances, then a long-running production might be a safe bet. They are, after all, long-running for a reason. My analogy for this is that if you are in a foreign country and you want coffee and the language barrier and the culture is just too much to deal with, you can always go to a Starbucks. A Starbucks is dependable and you know what to expect. It may or may not blow your mind, but you will not leave disappointed. But if you consider yourself a connoisseur of acting and live performances, and you're nitpicky about casting and delivery of the musical score, then a long-running production that's over two years old might not be your cup of tea. Don't get me wrong, these shows are performed by talented cast, but the difference is that when these performances premiered, the original cast put something of themselves into the production that contributed to the success of the show. And some of these productions are on their third, fourth, maybe even fifth casting. And the newer cast are expected to recreate that something the original cast put into the show. So in a way, it can sound a little bit dull or formulaic if you're very used to watching live performances. The Tony Awards is named after Mary Antoinette Perry, a woman renowned in the theater arts. If the Academy Awards or Oscars are for film, the Emmy Awards for television, and the Grammy Awards for music, then the Tony Awards are for Broadway productions and performances. 
But you don't necessarily have to pay attention to the winners of the Tony Awards. There are times where the winners of the Tony Awards have been questioned in the past. What you need to pay attention to are the nominations because to be nominated for a Tony is a big deal and a well-respected achievement in the theater industry. Because nominations are chosen by distinguished theater professionals, those whose opinions matter a lot in the theater world. So therefore, performances that have Tony nominations are worth looking into because they are basically vetted for by those who know a thing or two about quality theater. Tony nominations are selected in May and awarded in the fall. So here's a tip for you. Once Tony nominations are released in May, it's better to watch them before the awards are given in the fall. Because once a production has a Tony award, tickets might go up in price. Or they will probably go up in price. <laughs> Off-Broadways and Off-Off-Broadways tend to be more affordable than Broadways, but they can be a hit or miss. But it's on these Off-Broadway stages that you will find the hidden gems. If you are into indie films and productions, then you might want to look into Off and Off-Off-Broadway performances. Just because an Off-Broadway performance doesn't expand to a Broadway theater doesn't mean it's terrible or not worth seeing. As I said earlier, each theater has their own charm and appeal. To pick a performance on an off-Broadway or off-off-Broadway stage, I usually refer to critics in the New York Times or New York magazines or my friends who have a lot better palette for live performances than I do. I was going to include a segment in this video on how to get deals on Broadways and off-Broadways because there are several ways on how to do that. The whole time I've lived in New York, I have rarely paid for a full price on Broadways and off-Broadways because there are several ways of getting affordable tickets. For example, there's a program where if you're under 35 years old, you can get $30 tickets for two or if you go to a theater 20 minutes before an off-Broadway starts, then you can get tickets for $20. Unfortunately, after a year of being closed, Broadway is still trying to figure it out. New York is still trying to figure it out. We're all trying to figure it out. But I will come back to this topic. In the future, I plan to make a video that talks about how to get good deals on Broadway and off-Broadway performances. So subscribe and stay tuned for future videos. If there's a Broadway show that you are dying to watch right now, comment down below. I would love to hear what it is. With that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you like this video. Feel free to share this video with someone you know who loves Broadway just as much. Until next time, happy New Yorking!